hello everybody. Welcome to episode number six of Creating Your Career with Marla J. Alberti. I am so super excited as I am with every episode because I am interviewing Catalina McKeckern. I, I know I, I said it right, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Yes, <laughs> Catalina McKeckern, she's an environmental scientist. So I cannot wait to dig in to see how this career came to came to be. But you guys know I love to discuss how I meet people, and then I'm definitely going to read her bio. So Catalina and I are members of a prestigious, wonderful women's society called the Junior League. So if you don't know much about the Junior League, I'll put a link down in the description below so you can uh, look up the Junior League. We have many chapters across the United States, um, but we basically are a community of women helping to uh, develop communities and um, grow the communities, especially dealing with a lot of children. So if you want to know more information, I'd like to say I'll put a link down below. But that's how I met. I taught a class at uh, one of our Junior League events, and uh, Catalina attended my class, and we started talking, and lo and behold, here we are. So guys, you know I'm always, I'm a big fan of uh, getting out of your comfort zone and joining organizations and meeting people because you never know the amount of fantastic people you're going to meet. Okay, so I could talk about that all day. All right, so <laughs> let me go ahead and read her bio. Catalina, go ahead and say hey to everybody. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Yay. All right, so let me read her bio. Okay, so Catalina's love for the outdoors and natural scientific curiosity brought her to study environmental science at UCF, which is University of Central Florida. Yay, UCF. She began her career path interning for multiple government agencies, but moved on to the private sector after her graduation. Currently employed as an environmental scientist for the ecology department of Golder Associates, Catalina spends her time on a variety of projects where each workday is different from the last. I can only imagine. We're going to hear more about that. A large part of her project work deals with the gopher tortoise, so I can't wait to hear about that because we all love turtles. I have a turtle story. I, I'll tell you my turtle story, okay. <laughs> which is a state-threatened species and with the or with the wetlands, a national protected resource. When she's not at work, you can find Catalina spending time with her precious pit bull mix, Gracie, or volunteering either with the Rotaract, which is another national society, the Junior League, or her sorority alumni group. Welcome, 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 Catalina. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So, obviously, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came to where you're at, and of course, we're going to get into the career stuff. But just give us a little bit of background about Catalina. Yeah, so I grew up on a ranch in California, about an hour outside of Yosemite. It was a wonderful childhood to live and um, spend a lot of time outdoors. So that's how hiking, uh, I had a horse, had chickens, and then came to Jacksonville where I met you, Marla, because of my dad's from Jacksonville. So I moved here to be with my grandparents and that side of the family. And, um, yeah. and then you mentioned how I went to UCF and then came back to Jacksonville because I got a job right after graduation here. And I've been here for three years now, bought my home and established here now. I guess I'm here to stay. Awesome. Wow, awesome. Well, I guess you're here now. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Growing up growing up on a ranch. Wow. With all the animals. All the animals all around. So that so would you say that's where your love for animals came? Because you were surrounded by them? Yes. Or? And my love to just be outdoors because we didn't have organized soccer or like yeah. I I couldn't really hang out with friends that were down the street because it was very rural. So I would spend time exploring our property and out side a lot and that's how that all developed yeah. okay that's pretty cool so that takes us right into the next question about your career so tell us about your current career field you're an environmental scientist it's like that's like one of those titles you hear like you hear it on the news or you're here you'll read an article but you don't never meet people that are there yeah. so, so tell us about that tell us about being an environmental scientist how did that come to be in your career field so it was kind of a roundabout way. I entered college wanting to be in business and thought that'd be the most practical degree to study. Ended up hating it my first year. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to know a professor from UF who taught biology. And he toured me at his lab, uh, the Whitney Lab in St. Augustine, and introduced me to a bunch of people there and kind of talked about the different ways that I could explore science as a career field. And, okay, 
Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I decided to go into science. And then how I got to private consulting was kind of roundabout, too, was I always interned for government agencies. I interned for the Water Management District. I interned for Seminole County, which is close to UCF. Okay. And okay. I also interned for the school. Okay. And so I... Before graduation, I thought I was going to work for the government, too. Like, I thought that's in science, that's what you do is work for the government. That's okay, okay. A professor, and I didn't want to be a professor. Those were the two realms that I had only known. But applying, my dad met an uh, environmental scientist at a private consulting firm in Jacksonville. She was out in the community leading a hike, and he told me about the private sector of science that I hadn't heard about. I applied, I got the job, and... I am so grateful that I am in private consulting with science because I get to do something different every day, whereas the government, it's you always do the same thing every day. So that's how that's I got to where I am. Yeah. Wow, that, that's pretty cool. So let's backtrack a little because I like to recap so the audience can kind of understand what's going on. So basically, you started out, you went to school, um, mm -hmm. and you said, okay, and I noticed two things because, like I said, being as a trained coach, I, I listen for stuff. So you said that there's only two really jobs that you can do once you go into that science field. You can either be a professor or you can work for the government, which I yes. didn't know that. So basically that kind of goes into the third question. You kind of re you went in and you created your career. So you got with someone you know, then you talked to your dad, and then you mm -hmm. got introduced to someone else. Now you're in a different part. You're in a private sector. So you basically beat out the status quo and said, okay, I'm going to go do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how has it been? So tell us how, or how are you creating your career? How has it been working for its, it's um, uh, Golder Associates? So what, what is Golder Associates doing? How has that been for you with your role? Yeah, I mean, talking about creating your career, pursuing what I want to do, the projects, I have to talk to my boss and tell him, hey, I'm really interested in this field and doing more water sampling, for example. Mm -hmm. And I would like to do more of that. So there's a lot of creating my career and uh, getting the proper training and seeking that out uh, to do different things so I can learn and explore. And I am always curious and love learning more. So that's, that's one. Okay. And can you repeat that question again? What was more of, did oh, I and, and well, I was, no, you, you kind of answered because I was saying with, well, well, what, well, what does Golder and Associates do? Because when you hear Golder Associates, I wouldn't automatically think science. No, people think law. So because yeah, of yeah, I'm thinking law firm or some type of accounting firm. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's really diverse too because we have three different, three or four different groups in our office that all do different things too. Okay. And me okay. and ecology is really unique. And what we work with mostly is that the gopher tortoise that I discussed mm -hmm. and sent you pictures of because. People are really confused when I say that. Um, yeah, I'll put those in the link too. <laughs> so for me personally, it's when someone wants to, it's Florida Power and Light mostly. If they want to build a solar farm, they have to call us and be like, hey, I want to do this work. What is the environmental stuff? Like they just don't even know. They're like, all right, tell us. Tell us everything environmental. Is it, is it contaminated? Is there like toxins there? Um, okay which I don't deal with, a big part of our company deals with that stuff. And then what I deal with is, is there protected species or wetlands, the protected resource there that we need to worry about. Okay, okay, interesting. So if I, me, a contractor, want to build something over here in this land or whatever, I need to come to Golden Associates and talk to the guys about building and finding out the environmental side because you're right people you, it's like you don't think about that stuff you don't think about mm -hmm. when you're seeing all this construction going up they do have to talk to the environmental people to see how they can get everything put together and, and get the structure up you don't you, you don't think about that stuff but mm -hmm. that, that's very interesting it's very interesting tell me a little bit about the gopher tortoise like what is your work with that tortoise what is your work with that particular um, species and you said so, that it's going yeah. to be extinct or going away. Yeah, so they're protected because the gopher tortoises, gopher, they build these burrows mm -hmm. that can be really deep and long. Um, in Central Florida, it's about 15 feet long, like 10 feet down, wow. uh, going at a long slope. So they build these burrows, and a lot of other species use that as refuge. And they live there, and it provides 
uh, protection from the sun and the hot weather in Florida because it's really cool. It's down in the ground. It mm -hmm. also can help with breeding for frogs and, mm -hmm. other, and other species. So Okay. So do the other species, I'm, this is just me asking a sidebar question, <laughs> do the oh. other species get in the way of, a, of the turtle? So or? they, they cohabitate. It's a mutual. Oh, they have a mutual understanding. <laughs> That is so cool. So I told you I had a turtle story. My yes. quick turtle story was uh, in the, my other house that I lived in. I mm -hmm. came outside. It was a big, gigantic turtle on my doorstep. He was just sitting there. And I oh. thought maybe he was dead. So I didn't mess with him. I'm like, oh, my God, it's a turtle. He was, like, really this big. And I, he sat there for hours. So later oh. on in the afternoon, I went back out there. He was gone. And he left a big pile of poop on my <laughs> My doorstep, like on, on my doorstep, like so. I guess number one, I guess he had to use the bathroom, and uh -huh. I guess he <laughs> and he picked my house to rest. So I'm like, there's my turtle story. <laughs> but going back, I'm sorry, I can get sidetracked. That's my um, so tell us if anyone wants to get into the field of environmental science. So, because yeah. science, I like science. Uh, is very interesting. It's kind of mm -hmm. like philosophy. It's like, you know what's what's truth and what's not true so it's kind of like it's kind of like based off of a lot of opinions and stuff so tell us what are the skills to get into this career field that you think someone sure. needs so for me i do work outdoors a lot and you need the skill of being comfortable being out somewhere rural and creative thinking when you're out there um to i mean you're out in the middle of nowhere you have to figure out how to get from point a to point b with without uh real roads and stuff like that okay. yeah. um but i if if i would talk to someone young again i would recommend that they seek out some internships because okay. that is how you really get to get an understanding like you could read about it you could listen to yeah. stories all day but you need to be out there outside figuring out how you deal with the florida heat how you deal with plants and animals and um, bugs and all that fun stuff. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. And talking about creating your career, a big pivotal moment for me was realizing that I didn't know, like I had read and talked to the one professor, but I didn't know what went into the career and I sought out the internships. Um, and really they were offering internships with the Water Management District in Palatka. It was an hour from UCF. And I talked to my aunt and she was from Palatka and I was like, I, I want this internship in Palatka. And I, she talked to her friend and we ended up finding out that there was an office close, close to UCF, only 20 minutes away. And I created that internship. They didn't advertise it. It was just calling and working around and just saying, I'm willing to free labor. Just take me out there. And yeah. that's, that happened yeah oh my god so again there's always a theme to every single show that i do what you just said was key you stepped outside your box you were not in your comfort zone you stepped outside your box and you went and you made a phone call to a company that didn't even advertise anything for internships you said hey i want to come out there i'll i'll be out there for free you have to pay me for anything take me and yeah. uh, guys when you I hope you hear this because when you go out there and ask the question, only mm -hmm. the worst thing someone can say is, no, we don't want you to intern with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, but the best thing they can say is they might just say, yes, come on. And just like in your situation, they said, yes, come on board. And you did the internship. So that's great advice for anyone that wants to get into that field. Um, also, another key thing you said is you were willing to drive. You're willing to go the extra mile, drive an hour even though you want them going on in 20 minutes. So you got to be willing to do a little bit more. It can't just be, sounds like it couldn't be just, can't be just easy work. You got to be willing to do the stuff. And then you said, also be comfortable outside. So yeah. some key things are, if you're not comfortable out environmental, right? If you're not comfortable with the outdoors, if you're not comfortable with wanting to do stuff, then that might not be the field for you, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so that kind of goes into the next one. So, entrance points so what are some and we've kind of discussed some of these but what are some main some things that they someone has to do so the guy we got the skills but what are some things someone has to do to in, to become an environmental scientist um obviously school 
right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. okay, so tell us a little bit about that. Do they need to go to the undergraduate level? Do they need to go to the mass, a graduate level? Or how far can they go? Like, what are some of the entrance points? Yeah, so for academia, you do, you would need PhD, and then that's really hard to get into. For what I do in consulting, you just need a bachelor's. And okay. the master's, it can help you get the job, but it doesn't help you at your job. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes. I am so big on that. And I talk to people about it. I'm I'm big on school. I'm in school. I stay in school. I told you my friends say I'm a career student, but I'm actually writing that in, in the new book that I'm writing. I'm coming out in January, guys. Um, 52 career, 52 action steps to move you forward. Um, I talk about get the degree, but the degree only shows or tells the world that you're aware of a, or that you have knowledge of a subject matter. It doesn't say that you have the, the uh, know-how to do the subject matter. Right. So getting the degree is one thing, but what are you going to do to further along and move forward? So what's uh, so now that let's say they got the degree and I thought it was very interesting. You said the bachelor's degree is for a consulting piece so mm -hmm. they can do the consulting. But obviously, if, if they want to do the teaching, the professor, they need to go ahead and move forward with their graduate degrees. Right. Yeah. Masters as well as their P do they have to go to PhD level? I'm pretty sure to become a professor. Well, it's yeah, just so competitive. They wouldn't even yes. look at you just a master's. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the field that I'm going into. But I wasn't sure if it was uh, as competitive for master's degree. You could maybe do you have your master's degree yeah. and uh, teach at, at the professor level. But I guess with with that area, that I guess it probably would be competitive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that um, and let's see, was there? A th did we mention? And I'm sorry, you said uh, we said the degree. We said mm -hmm. be outdoors. What was there another? Was there another interest point? Uh, oh, outside internships, was there another interest point that you would recommend? Um, I mean, so it is a lot of regulating yourself. You're out there by yourself um, and project work needs to be done. It's a lot of you need to be able to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Okay. 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 So you said a lot of project work. So is it, would you say it's a lot of project? Because you're basically, you're managing your own projects. Basically. Yeah. And um at, yeah, at certain levels, there's always someone overseeing the grand scheme, but right. day to day, I'm the one developing the plan to execute what needs to be done. Okay. And, um, and with consulting, it is, you don't, it's nice that every day is not the same, but it's hard to plan. Yeah. And yeah. you don't even know if you're going to be in town tomorrow or where you're going to be. So. Okay. Um, luckily, most of it isn't overnight work. It's but it, I'm usually in Central or an hour away, Central Florida, or far away. Um, okay. So an interest point would be uh, comfortable with not having a day to day that's a routine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just be happy with knowing that you're going to go into your job today, not knowing what's going to happen. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. sit down nine to five. I'm going to know what's on my calendar. This meeting at two o'clock This meeting at three o'clock. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, 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 and with those, let me, let me ask this. So with someone, let's say that's in their thirties or forties that mm -hmm. wants to change careers and yeah. go on. To them, what would you, rec what would you say to that person? What would you say to that person that says, you know, I've really been into science. I really love science. I really want to do more than this for a hobby. What would you say to that person if they want to get into that career? So if they were comfortable with every day being different, consulting is great. If they want it to be the same in a set schedule, government, uh, okay. what I would suggest. So I would suggest to them figuring out what they want so that they have their set expectations and then they can go in and shadow. I would like setting up, you wouldn't, not necessarily internships like I did where you go in every day, but shadow, definitely shadow someone and um, figure out what, what that's like, because you don't know if you're comfortable with that until you actually do it. Right. And then you don't know what, like you say, every day, so you don't know what you're going to be working on. It may not necessarily, because could you work, is it possible you could work with many different species? You may not just work with one yeah. Then you can work with many different species, and I, mm -hmm. and I honey, Catalina, I congratulate you for doing this. Cause I, I couldn't do it. Uh huh. <laughs> I like being outdoors, but I am not a bug slash animal 
<laughs> type person. <laughs> like I'll go to the zoo and stuff like that, but <laughs> I am not that type of person. But I do like nature and I like seeing how things evolve and I like learning the stuff. So I don't know if I could do it for a job though. Don't know if I could do it for a job. So that's why you have to know. I love that you said that. You have to know your comfort zone. You have to know uh, where you fit in because just because you like something doesn't mean that you're going to be good at it. You know, and just because you're good at something doesn't mean you're supposed to be doing it. So you mm -hmm. got to kind of get out there and feel your way around. So and as we kind of sum up and round things up here, I do have one last question I'm going to ask. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to do a summary real quick. So basically, Carolina has taught us that to step outside your box, I, she she's really created her career. She created an internship, guys. She didn't wait for someone to come to her and say, oh, I have an internship for you. No, she went and called and made the phone call to a company that wasn't even advertising and got her internship. She spoke to different people, and now she's doing something on the side, which is not the norm. The norm is professor right? Or the norm is government. No, she's doing consulting. Now she's working in a great company, creating her schedule, doing what she wants to do. So this is what we talk about, guys, with creating your career. Are there any, um, before I get to that last fun question, are there any last minute points or things that you want to give the audience um, about being an environmental scientist and what they can do? Okay, so a big part of consulting is the business aspect of it and networking. Yeah. And that's that's something that I really enjoy and it's fun in the client relations mm -hmm. that is not science related. Like there is a little bit of business related in consulting and that's what I love. You're right because we've been talking about consulting. We haven't mentioned anything about business, right? Because <laughs> okay. that's what consulting is. That is the, cons that is the mm -hmm. business side. So, do, so you do you do a little bit of that or no? You do a little bit of the, the business side of it? A little bit of like keeping the client relations and that's something that I want to learn more about project management and invoicing and, you know, that kind of thinking that doesn't come natural to scientists. And that's not something we study with our bachelor's degree. And right. I love to learn more about. Yeah. Okay, cool. All oh, this has been so awesome, guys. I have learned. I've, I've just been enlightened. Seriously, I've learned so much in this session, guys. I hope you have been taking notes like I was. So, Catalina, I ask a fun question every single time. So, the que fun question is tell us something that the world that you want to share that the world may not know about you. Okay. They may not know about me. Um, let's see. I know. I knew that this one was going to be hard. Um, <laughs> and I love the ones that all the other interview people have brought up. And let's see that they may not know about me. Um, oh, I am a big knowledge seeker. I am someone who is, I have just found out about these apps to listen to audiobooks and you check them out with your library card. I am always listening to podcasts, always. I'm a big knowledge seeker, so not everyone knows this until they get me started on it. But if you want a list of books to read or podcasts to listen to or YouTube channels, I have your back and I can like give you way more than you want to learn about. Yeah. Is, so there that's something. Is there a particular area that you like to listen? Cause I'm the same way too. I'm list, I'm, I listen to podcasts all day long. Gary V is one of my favorites. Evan Carmichael is another one of my favorites. I listen to them all day long, um, all day. So are there any of your favorites that you want to mention? So are those motivational ones or are they uh, finance? Those are, those are entrepreneurial and main, mm -hmm. those, are, those are mainly entrepreneurial. Okay. Not quote unquote motivation. Yeah, those definitely Gary V and Evan Carmichael are entrepreneurial ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, ones that the podcasts I've been loving are finance podcasts, okay. just because when you own your money, you can really and take control of your money. You that open so many more options for your life and mm -hmm. your career. You're able yeah. to enjoy work because you're not stressed about making ends meet. Yes. To be outside and enjoy it because I'm not worried about making sure that. I have everything taken care of at home financially. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I understand it's, 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 um, I always tell people, I always tell my clients to take the strength finders test and it gives you those five strengths. And one of my strengths is the intellectual and the intellectual is the person that loves to seek knowledge. Like we just like to collect knowledge and just, you know, just let it sit there. That's me. I love, I mean, I like using it too. I use the knowledge when I can, you know, but, um, I love, I just love listening to podcasts, reading books and I like to know stuff. I'm just nosy. That's why I, that's why I yeah. <laughs> me too. 
So guys, if you have any questions or concerns for Catalina, she's going to leave us her information. But go ahead. Did, did you want to leave your email or is there a number that if anyone wants to call you or maybe email or ask you any questions, did you want to go ahead and st tell the audience that? Um, you could leave my work email there. Um, okay. That'll be great. And then, um, yeah, I think that's a great way to, I check my email. I have to answer it and be on top of it. So. Okay. All right. So cool. I will leave Catalina's email and information down in the links below guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Look for a new episode next month, 2018. This is the first episode of, uh, we'll have the next episode coming out. Um, for January this is the first one. So super excited. We're going to be moving into the new year, big things happening. So, so glad Catalina. Thank you so much. This was an awesome interview and Thank bye everybody.